It's almost the end of the school year, so I figured I would give you guys a tour of my art room. Here are my art room rules. Um, the first one is save all questions for when students are working independently. Let the teacher give directions without interruption. Number two is follow directions. Number three is use tools and equipment properly. Clean up after yourself and put things away where they belong. Four is hands, feet, and objects to yourself which also means don't throw anything in this room ever, not even a crumpled up piece of paper to shoot a basket into the garbage. Um, constructive criticism only, no put downs. And return to your seat as soon as you're done cleaning up and stay there until you are dismissed. No wandering around the room visiting people. And stay away from the door unless you have permission to leave. Um, here we have uh, my grading rubric, which I actually got from a, another art teacher in the art teacher forum. Um, she posted it and I downloaded her picture, but it shows how you can do your best job, how you can do a good job, how you can just put the minimum in to meet the requirements of the assignment, and what sort of a grade you'll get if you don't put in much effort at all. Here is George. He's one of the skeletons that always hang in my classroom so the kids can learn proportions. Here's another skeleton. Here's my bird color wheel. Here's some reference material for how to draw people. Reference material for colors, blending colors. This is my classroom library, such as it is, being that it's almost the end of the school year, it's a bit of a mess because the kids are always borrowing the books and putting them back. Uh, here's where the kids can go to get colored pencils and markers. These are pretty much out all the time. Here are the marble roller coasters that my 6th, 7th, and 8th graders have been designing. And there's tons of them. They're everywhere. They're all over the classroom. And the kids are in the process of designing them. Okay. This is where we store each class's artwork. You can see it's kind of messy. These are... This is another part of my library. These are the step-by-step -step drawing books. I keep them in a separate spot. Okay, this is my paint center. So we have tempera cakes, we have watercolors, we have acrylic there and here, different types of brushes, the dirty brush bucket, the sink, paper towels, sponges. So basically the kids know the procedure. At the end of the period, they drop their brushes in the dirty brush bucket. Um, I clean and reshape my brushes, which is why they're always in pretty good shape. Even at the end of the school year, you can see my brushes are pretty much in decent condition um, because I insist on washing them myself. Um, this is the um, sort of the help area for constructing the um, marble runs. So you can see the kids can go back here and look at different ideas and different directions for how to construct things. If they forget one of the directions, they can always go back here for reference. This is where the hot glue guns are usually set up. I have extension cords and power strips. And right now they're put away, but there's hot glue guns usually at this bank of tables so the kids can construct their marble runs. So you can see there's more marble runs here. This is another home run. On, they're in the process of being built, so they're not painted yet. Some of the kids are still testing them. Now this is my maker area. So this is where the kids go to get supplies as they construct their marble roller coasters. And you can see it's filled with different types of scrap cardboard, different pieces, paper towel rolls, scissors, glue, paper plates, popsicle sticks, masking tape, scrap cardboard. The kids basically go here, they help themselves to the supplies, they go to the construction area where they use the hot glue guns, or they go back to the tables in the classroom, and that's where they construct their artwork. Okay, over here you can see my tiny little drying rack, which is filled right now with paintings that I'm in the process of taking out and sorting and I'll put on the shelves over here in the correct homeroom spot so we can work on the 
paintings next time. This is my paper cutter. You would not know it is a paper cutter because it is completely buried. I bury it on purpose because if the kids know that it's there, they will be tempted to try and use it. But they don't. They just think it's a pile of papers. I just sort of push the papers aside when I need to use the when I need to use the paper cutter. And this is my incredibly messy desk area. Not a single surface of desk is visible. It's just basically all stuff. So you can see what an incredible mess it is and all the stuff that I take out and put away depending on what class I am working with and what materials we need. And this is the mirror so I can see if there's paint on my face periodically. Um, and that's basically it. This is this is Winneberg, the Helpful Art Teacher's art room, and what it looks like at the end of May, beginning of June, about three weeks before the end of the school year. Voila.